So my favorite Halloween costume was probably my Power Ranger costume that I made up out of aluminum foil. <laughs> you laughed at your own joke? That's good. No, that's not a joke. I'm serious. What I color have was it aluminum foil? Silver. I was a Silver Ranger. What Silver Ranger? The one from space. Oh, I forget. You're still a child. Okay, great. Carry on, my wayward son. What is up, everybody? <laughs> this is Will Zabo. Thank you for joining us on episode 10. Is it 10? Of The Enthusiast. Yes, we are now in double digits. I can't believe it. We have a one and a zero. Ooh. I'm one of your hosts, Will Zabo, alongside me, the man, the big pop bear, you better not be eating his porridge, Jesse Nazario. That's not bad. I actually like that one. Big pop bear. What is porridge? I have no idea. I have no idea. I always <laughs> pictured oatmeal. I don't That's know. That's what, what I always look at. kind of considered porridge. Was there it too. is, oatmeal. So uh, if you know what that is, please leave a comment. All right? I will personally thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> so um, how's your week been? Everything good? Yeah, pretty good. Um, just been playing some games. Uh, started playing the Kingdom Hearts 2.8. Still chugging away at some Resident Evil here and there. Just, so many Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Um, 2.8, I will say I cannot stand Dream Drop Distance. Which is the 3DS game. I do not like it. But I do love the game where you get to play as Aqua. I think it was a Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep point two. Mm. Really good. I really, really have no it. idea what you're talking about. It's kind of like the... Uh, it's supposed to give you a taste of what 3 is going to feel like. Uh, Sword. Sword had the Keyblade. Sword did have the Keyblade. I know about Goofy and Donald. Uh, Beast shows up in the first one. That's that's where my Kingdom Hearts <laughs> knocks up. <laughs> I'm not taking it away. I know they're great games. I just sometimes you uh, you crowd up your own franchise too much. I think you know what I mean. I can see that. You remember when like Resident Evil got successful and then they like they too much got Resident <laughs> Evil Gaiden. You know what I mean and Survivor. Nobody liked that one. Operation Raccoon City. Operation Raccoon City. Um, what was the other one? Outbreak. They weren't terrible games, but they definitely weren't. Resident Outbreak Evil. Outbreak was the one on the PS2, wasn't it? Yes, that was the first, first co-op. Yes, and online. online. Yeah. Yes. The issue was, because I had the game online, uh, there was no such thing as mics yet. So you had four commands you could use, which gave your character no direction. So you were constantly so confused on what to do with each other. Honestly, me and a couple of my friends we play, we used to have to use um, text messenger to play it. And it wasn't like phones today, where you can pull up a keyboard. It was that old-fashioned... Press each button to get the letter you wanted. <laughs> so it, it took forever. Yeah, they sit there and press one. And <laughs> uh, no, I didn't want to count a. a. God damn it, that's a twice. Yeah, like, you have three capitals in the middle of your word for no reason. <laughs> so. Um, I actually got really quick at that when I was younger. But I'm also playing uh, the new Fire Emblem game on mobile. You were telling me about it. Yeah. And it's free, huh? It is free. Uh, obviously, they have microtransactions, but you can do everything you want without it. Um, so they kind of give you a way to earn your first couple heroes. Heroes cost orbs, and you get the orbs by completing missions. For every mission you complete, you get eight, one orb, and to summon a, char a new character costs five orbs. So you have to basically do five missions to get a hero, but it's random. You might not get a good hero, and you might not get like anyone you know. Uh, so far, I've been really enjoying it, though. It's been a lot of fun and strangely addicting. Mm. Um, but that's pretty much all I've been playing. I'm waiting for Neo next week. The guy that is the one to save the Matrix? Not the one that's the one. Uh, the samurai type game, it's uh, it's basically similar to like the Dark Souls series. It's okay. It's be extremely hard. I know you're not really into those. Hey, make me feel bad about myself. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I'm pretty excited for it. Uh, it looks really good. But So what have you been playing? What have you been up to? Um, I finished Resident Evil 7, and uh, not that I'm... I feel sad because it really peaked. I was super excited for that. And after it was over, I was like, I don't, I don't know what to do with my life. So uh, I started playing Grand Theft Auto San Andreas again. Because mm -hmm. uh, um, I don't know if you know this, but I love the Grand Theft Auto games. Okay. So maybe I'm just that typical gamer. <laughs> Resident Evil, Grand Theft Auto, I'm just happy. They're great games. And then um, a friend of mine let me borrow Far Cry 4. Okay. I'd never tried that series out before. Not bad. And then today I started playing Resident Evil Revelations again. How far are you in Far Cry 4? Not far. I think I got to after the Avalanche in the beginning. Okay. 
Yeah. So not that I hate it. Just it's uh, a good game. It's different though. It's different. Yes. So I feel like it started way too late in that franchise. Maybe. Mm. Plus, I always hear people talking about Far Cry Three, and I was like, maybe I should try that one. Three, out. in my opinion, is the peak still. Um, so if you ever could go back and play three, I would say you should definitely do that. Not on the PS4, though, is it? It is not on the PS4. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh well. But uh, that, that's that's legitimately what I've been doing this week. A lot of Grand Theft Auto and now Resident Evil Revelations. I've been enjoying today. That makes sense. So that was the one that came out on the 3DS Wii U. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I've yes. never played uh, Revelations one. Did a, a little bit of Revelations 2, but it was episodic, so it was one of those things where I didn't like having to wait for the episode, so I just kind of like fell off of playing it. I waited until all of them came out and then just picked up the hard disk version. Um, I like the Revelations series for the Resident Evils, because they're... It's like a uh, best of both worlds kind of thing. Before 7 came out, it was the new controls with the old school... Horror. Kara, you know, real closed in, narrow passageways, you know, you're not running past anything because hallways is just too thin kind of thing, so. I agree. Plus, they brought back Barry Burton in the uh, second one. Ooh. He was just, he was awesome, man. <clears throat> Barry, uh, Barry is an awesome character. He is. Maybe, maybe we should just go into one of our things off of that. All right, yeah. Yeah. Top 10 Resident Evil characters. That's yes. What did there. So we decided that we were going to go into our top 10 favorite Resident Evil characters for this episode. It's not going to be the whole episode. It's probably just going to be a short section, and then we'll go into the news. But since we were already talking about Resident Evil, why not just stick with this? Absolutely. Especially now that that franchise is over 20 years old. Oh, yeah. Seven official sequels in, not counting all the side stories. Yeah. So, so let's start at number 10. Who would you say your number 10 is? Number 10 for a character I enjoyed. I'm going to go with... Hmm, put me on the spot here. I mean, I could go first if you want. Yes, could you? Yeah, so my number 10 is actually going to be a, a really new character, Zoe Baker. Okay. From the Baker family. I don't know if her... Is her last name actually Baker? I don't know if they actually... I'm guessing, were. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would assume so too. But um, I really liked Zoe. She, e even though you don't really see her until the very end, spoiler alert, um, anyway, yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed the interactions you have with her. Yeah, and like I said, um, don't want to get too spoiler in it, but you do kind of get a connection to her in that game. So I agree. That's not bad. It is a very new character. Um, it's not a bad choice. I'm going to go with a number 10. It's going to be Carlos Olivia from Resident Evil 3. Okay. Okay. I enjoyed him as a character. Also, the fact that he's Hispanic might be a little partial towards him. But um, you also might remember him as the uh, one they casted in the movies and completely ruined him. So, you know. <laughs> the movies have done that with every character. Yeah, they have. They have. I heard Except for Barry Burton. I love the casting for him. It was fantastic. I heard Wesker's in the new movie, too. He was in uh, 4 and 5. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't mind the guy that played him. He um, <clears throat> legitimately just played the video game him, which is kind of weird. Oh, okay. I feel like you got to be a little more three-dimensional for a movie, but, you know, hey, I agree. this. Who's your number nine? My number nine, Rebecca Chambers. Okay. I actually, uh, Zero is my second favorite Resident Evil game, and I really like Rebecca. Uh, at first, I didn't. I felt she was very whiny. Yes. But as you play through the game, you're just kind of like, wow, this is a girl. She's, she's tough. Rebecca, she's just a field medic. Rebecca Chambers is the reminder that Resident Evil are Japanese games and they don't understand American culture because she is 19 years old in that franchise. Yes. What 19-year-old you know is a cop? Not only a cop, on a special squad unit. You have stars, which is supposed to be the best of the best, and they're set on a mission in the middle of nowhere. Like, you know what? With the world's smallest bulletproof vest. All right? That covers nothing. <laughs> That's true. So, uh, but no, she is a cool character. Um, I don't like the fact that she, her hair color changed. Uh, in the original franchise, Resident 1, she had red hair. Then it kind of turned to a yeah. blonde in Zero. So, um, yeah, definitely a cool character. Um, I'm going to say Jessica for my number nine, which is a character from Revelations. I really liked her as a character. Um, 
It's a little mysterious, mm-hmm. and uh, you got to play through the whole game to kind of get her whole backstory. But she's one of the characters I actually liked in Resident Evil. Now, was she in? She was only in Revelations one, right? Correct, only okay. Revelations one. So I didn't remember her in two, so that's why I was mm-hmm. like, what are you nope. talking about? Okay. Yeah, matter of fact, Revelations two. I don't think any of the characters continued on. No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my number eight is actually another new one. Uh, Ethan. The character you played as, Ethan Winters. All right. For nine. And I, the reason why I really like... Winters? Liked, yeah, his last name's Winters. When did we find this out? Uh, I actually just looked up the file on him. That's what they have his last name as. All right. Ethan Winters. Uh, weird that they don't say it in the game, mm-hmm. but that might not even be the actual name they're going to go with. Maybe that's just a placeholder type thing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But Ethan, anyway. Uh, I really liked him. Uh, I like that even though he was a guy that was in a very unlucky situation, he stuck through it, you know, and I can, it was my choice at the end of who he saved, but I, you know, I just had a really good time with the character. I thought he was funny. He would say like these witty one-liners after you beat a boss. Yeah. I was actually surprised how much depth they gave him because of the fact that, you know. I really thought they were just, he was just going to be a blank slate. That's, yeah. Where I was just going to portray my emotions yeah. and stuff on to him. Versus he actually had lines in the game and uh, voice and all that. So, you know, I thought it was interesting. That's why it's still weird to me. You never really got to see his face. Yeah. So, um, very un Evil like. Always, you know, give you a character's face or profile, even their blood type. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> That's but, true. Yes. So, who's your uh, number eight? Uh, number eight, I'm going with, ooh, if I can't remember her name, Ada Wong. Ada Wong? Yes. Huh. Never uh, a huge fan of her, but I appreciate what she's done for the franchise. Okay. She's um, a little higher for me personally, but. Mm, no. <laughs> no. I, I do enjoy her as a character, but um, I, most of what I like about her is the complex storyline between her and uh, Leon. I mm. uh, love that love-hate relationship. I can agree between them, so um, that's the only reason she made my list. Nothing too special about her. Okay. And she took too damn long to ring the bell and wrestling before when I was getting jumped to the beginning. <laughs> All these chainsaw guys coming out of nowhere. And you finally want to ring the bell 20 minutes later. Um, my number seven is Chris Redfield. What was that face for? Because that's my boy, man. Uh, my boy, agree. Chris Redfield reminds me of the typical Captain America. Personally, mm. I think he just wants to do the right thing. He's that goody goody, but you know, I, I like him. He's a good character. I think his guns are a little too big in five. Don't mind his arms. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> yeah. his superhuman arms. Where he punches boulders. <laughs> That's right, man. Chris got in that way. Uh, can't agree with you on this. Him being so low on the list, man. Uh, I think Chris is the cornerstone of this franchise. I kind of just feel like he's a very bland character. And uh, him, and especially in 5 and 6, how they fleshed out his character even more, I really enjoyed. But I'll get to there whenever, if he makes my list. Probably, though. <laughs> I, I have a feeling he's definitely up there. Yeah. Maybe at the peak. I don't know. We'll have to get through that journey. Who was, who was it in um, my number 7? Who was it in 5, Chris's partner? Cecilia Sheva. 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 Uh, Enjoyed her as a character. Her AI, not so much, but I did enjoy her as a character. I enjoyed your banter between you two as characters, and I love that accent. Thanks, partner. Yeah. I need help. Like, <laughs> you made my list because of that. Um, so plus, it was, that was very brave of Five to be like, you know what? Let me give you a whole new character for you to play the whole game co-op with. You know what I mean? That's true. I mean, where they very well could have went with somebody new, like. Is she was African? Yes, she was. Uh, the one thing I thought that was weird, though, is when you go to play, get the uh, Resident Evil 5 Gold Edition, they took her off the cover. Yes. They added Jill. Of course. Which was weird to me. I was like, yeah. wow, way to just backseat. The... They did the same thing on um, when you re- buy the remake for uh, PS4. Yeah. Yeah. It's just Jill's Jill. on the cover, yep. Yeah. yeah. So, and they haven't touched back on her because I do know a lot of people who were not fond of her as a character. because really? of, Yeah. Just because of the AI, though. And the fact that what 5 did turn it into an action game yeah so uh, but yeah I enjoyed her as a character I thought she was pretty cool not bad looking too no not at all Mm -hmm. my number six is another new character this is actually the last new character for my list but I put it could it be Mia no uh, Jack Baker 
time. God, he was just so such a great villain. And then like, when you, we're not going to go into spoiler territory, but we we had that whole podcast where we talked about that. But man, the ending of that game with him, it was it was a it was a good character. I'll give you that. Yes. Yeah. I definitely really liked him. Kind of upset that I pro- we probably won't ever see anything else with him. It might be okay that it's that way, but, you know. Maybe, maybe not. Probably. Uh, my number six is Nemesis. Nemesis? Yes. Um, for those who didn't know, Resident Evil 3 was not meant to be the sequel. They just couldn't get out of their contract with Sony, which wanted three numbered sequels. So that's why Code Veronica was the side story, even though that was meant to be the sequel, and Nemesis had the three attached to it. But uh, I did enjoy Nemesis, it gave you the most scenarios, and the game had so much replay value because how you depended on how you decided to take Nemesis on. Not to mention... Was that the one where he also... I'm sorry to interrupt you right there. You did. But was that the one where he could go into your save rooms? Yes. Okay, I didn't know if it was three or two. Yes. Sorry. And he was terrified, man. <laughs> the stars. Yeah. <laughs> Um, not to mention, it was like, anytime you thought you could get away from him, he threw a wall. He didn't care. <laughs> so, uh, but Nemesis was the first time, like, you felt really uneasy in a Resident Evil game because you didn't even have safe rooms anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was like, in 3, you always fell on the edge because you never knew when Nemesis was going to pop up. And uh, I remember the first time playing through that, it was just, it was a terrifying thought. I remember there were so many theories on what Nemesis was or who he could be and all that. So, always one of my favorite characters, even though he was ruined. In another movie, <laughs> Rubber Man, Resident Evil 2. That's what they always do. Uh, I don't even know how those movies are. China. That's how those movies are still being made. China. Thank you, China. Uh, my number five is actually Ada Wong. And that's because I, uh, I was surprised that you put the Leon-Ada dynamic so low, because for me, that's why she's so high. I like that it feels like that. Batman Catwoman type thing to me. Okay, alright. But. I can see that, but I'm not fond of Batman Catwoman either, so. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Italia. Oh, oh, every day. Yeah. Every day. Okay, I can respect that. Who's your five? Uh, Claire Redfield. Claire, she was from two? Two. two yes. Chris's sister. Uh, meant to be a different character originally, and then they wanted to connect Resident Evil 2 to one, so they made her a Redfield instead. And changed your hair color. Um, I, I know I always say this, but Claire was one of those real first tough girls in a video game, and I do respect her. She didn't need Leon's help. You know what I mean? If you played as her, you had rescued Leon at certain points. And uh, I just enjoyed it because she was a biker. You know what I mean? She was a red yeah. field. And I love the whole story of, like, you know what I mean? Her brother goes missing, and she hears all this junk is happening in the city, so... What most girls do, you know, call the cops or whatever. No, she got on her motorcycle, she drove to the city, and found her brother, or at least tried to. So, and then any other game she's come up with, uh, Revelations 2, she's one of the main characters. I love her take charge. Yeah, she is the main character, isn't she? Well, Revelations so. 2, Barry and her. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, she's in Code Veronica, which is one of my favorite Resident Evils. And like I said, I just, I like the fact that she's just a really tough character. So, um, to me, to the point where I feel like she's a little tougher than Jill, which is surprising, just because Jill is the, um... Poster girl. Yeah, Resident Evil. And Claire, I never felt like, you know, needed to get rescued from being squished or anything like that. She never came a Claire sandwich. Don't, okay. I'm not going to try that one again. That joke isn't going to work. I love that joke. I know you do. I know you do. You try it all the time. It's, so, uh... It's such a bad line, man. Next is Jill Valentine for me, for my number four. I re- it's kind of funny that you bring her up. But I one, I think she's smoking. Especially right. in Revelations. I was yes. watching you play Revelations You're earlier welcome. today. And I was like, God, Jill has got it going on. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I just think uh, Jill's always been a really cool character. I, I think they kind of confused her because sometimes she'll have blonde hair. Yes. Sometimes she'll have dark hair. I'm like, what is going on? Like, does she just dye her hair constantly? But uh, I do think she's a cool character, very strong female character. Um, and I, I, you know, I just enjoy playing as her and seeing her on screen, even if I don't get to play as her. Like Fair in enough. four, no, five. Five was when she was like the villain. Bad guy, but not really bad, bad guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. 
Uh, for my number four is going to be Barry Burton. Just because I love him. He's fantastic. He's actually a really funny character. He is. Uh, from Resident Evil 1, he did not pop back up to Revelations 2 because depending on the ending of 1, he didn't make it or he did. And if you played as Chris, he didn't make it at all. So, um, canon storyline now. It is Jill's ending is the canon ending for Resident Evil 1. But uh, definitely love Barry. And only character I felt like the Resident Evil movies got right. I liked the actor who played him. I liked him as a character. Um, also, you love him so much you keep quoting his joke. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, I mean, <clears throat> the first game is in the Guinness Book Records for the worst dialogue. But even going back, I'm like, man, this dialogue is awful. Jill, this stuff is real powerful, especially things living. Like, what? <laughs> like, the actors had to be written this. I'm like, this doesn't make sense. Are you sure? So, yeah, it's Japanese. Come on, just read it. Yeah. <laughs> Probably what the director was looking at. <laughs> oh, and he finds a blood spot in the beginning. What is this stuff? And um, anybody that played the first Resident Evil members, in order to make it more realistic, they would move their arms a lot while they were talking, and it just looked so ridiculous. So, but yeah, definitely. Windmill. Um, not to mention, I loved his reintroduction in Revelation 2, like... Um, his daughter gets kidnapped, so he just, doesn't matter. He packs up his stuff, and he's like, well, I'm going to go after it. That's it. Simple as that. Yeah. I don't need the Coast Guard. I don't need anything. I got this. So. Funny character. Um, and a redhead. Yeah, still souls. Yeah. Never Probably why he's made it so long. Probably. Uh, my number three is actually Albert Wesker. Ooh. Some would say he's the bad boy. Of the game of the series, he definitely was a long running bad guy. Um, I really like Albert Wesker. Um, he's just such an interesting character. I love that he, when he took the virus, he did transform into something weird until five. Yes, <laughs> pisses me off. Yeah, five ruined it for me too. But I just love like one of my favorite scenes in five is when he throws his sunglasses at Chris. Chris, Chris catches them. Yeah. He punches Chris in the face, and then catches his own glasses and puts them back on. And that was, it was an awesome scene. I did love his uh, movements. and I also liked the fact that he was that first time, at least I remember in video games, really feeling betrayed. Like, you yeah. jerk. Yeah. You're behind all of this. So I, um, I agree. I, I really like Wesker a lot. I remember the first time I played Resident Evil. Um, which had the live action cutscenes in between. I thought Wesker was so cool. I was like, look at this guy. Slick back hair, sunglasses inside. This dude is awesome. Having to feel like, he betrayed me. <laughs> no, no, this is terrible. I, th- I didn't see it coming with a slick back hair. Yeah, I, could, I could see that. Wesker. Um, my number three, I'm going to finally fit her in, is Jill Valentine. Okay. Um, just a cool character, I'd say. She's also the master of lock picking. <laughs> That's my last Barry joke. Has a lot. Yeah, we get it. <laughs> That's my last Barry joke, I promise. No, it's not. It is, maybe. You're probably, probably going to make them for the duration of this podcast. Maybe, I can't help it. <laughs> not just this episode, <laughs> the so, whole podcast. Resident Evil 1, to me, did something so special where they gave you two different characters. Both had unique stories. Although you were in the same mansion, you did a lot of the same puzzles. You approached them differently as each character. If you played as Jill, Barry helped you out a lot. And doing stuff. If you play this, Chris, you better figure it out on your own because Rebecca's only going to save you once from the <laughs> snake. All right. And uh, I just enjoy the fact that Jill couldn't take as much damage, but she started off with a gun and she could lock, have a lockpick, you know, which was really neat. Chris could take more damage and was a more powerful character, but he started off with a knife. And I appreciate them doing that. That's why I always appreciate Jill because um, first time I ever finished Resident Evil was with Jill Valentine. She started off with a gun, <laughs> made the game a lot easier. She brought a gun to a zombie fight. There it is. And then he dropped a gun. gun. <laughs> so, um, I had no idea. They never explained it in any of the cutscenes. And when they did the remake on the GameCube, I was like, oh, they're going to explain why he doesn't start off with a gun this one. No. Just no. Chris is clumsy. He must have dropped it. Or apparently that day, he went to work without his gun. <laughs> and in the copter, he's like, oh, What shit. are you talking about? Oh, Chris, shit. Chris always has two. Left and right. Left and right, that's right. <laughs> that's what that Chris works out. He punches boulders. <laughs> Chris, Chris every morning looks at his handguns like, I don't need that. 
<laughs> Puts that little tight green vest on and calls it a day. Um, but yeah, that I can. Anyway, but yeah, Jill uh, always enjoyed her as a character, and like you said, not not a terrible looking woman. And um, I'm not crazy. She's one of the first um, mixed uh, characters in a video game, half Asian, half American. Yeah. So yeah. Um, number two for me, Billy Cohen. You make that face and you just turned away from me like you disowned me. No. I think Billy is actually a really cool character, and I think he's very underused in Resident Evil. He's only been in one game. Man. I know. Uh, the, my favorite thing about Billy is he was a soldier that didn't want to follow the orders he was given because he felt they were wrong. Correct. Um, and then he was willing to still do his time because he was like, you know what? I get it. I wasn't following orders, but I'm not going to. The thing I like about Billy is... Resident Evil has a tendency to completely keep going back to these characters, rehashing them, rehashing them. Billy's story really had a beginning and had an end. It ends at zero, and you kind of wish the best for him after that, and I yeah. do enjoy that. I really would not Sick arm tattoo. Oh, he had such a great arm tattoo. I really wish that they would uh, bring him back, though. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing him in maybe a newer Resident Evil. I feel like since they never really touched back on Rebecca either, I feel like she went and looked him up, and they're like... Four kids in now, you know what I mean? Yeah. Happy, just satisfied. Because, I mean, uh, you have the Capcom Encyclopedia. Yes. And Billy is actually one of the few Resident Evil characters that isn't even in it. Yeah, yeah. So that feels like a slap to the face to me, but hey. Yeah, and we share a name. So it is true. I gotta love the guy. Uh, we've been friends for years. I don't think I've ever called you Billy. So when you just said that, I was like, what? No, you're so not. <laughs> that is super awkward. It is. Yeah. Uh, my number two is Leon Kennedy. Mm. All right. You're, you're going to tear up? I know you're upset. No, no, it's fine. Um, you can be too. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, I do. I always, and this is going to sound crazy to me, Leon is in both of my favorite Resident Evils, which are two and four. Okay. Till seven. I love seven. Um, Leon is an awesome character. What a crappy first day as a cop to go through this. Um, this is so crazy and why he didn't make number one for me. All right, I'll give you that. The first game came out in the 90s. And you know what, maybe it was okay for a cop to have a bowl cut like that. You know what I mean? But when four comes out and he still has the same haircut and he's working Secret Service, cut your damn hair, Leon. All right, you look ridiculous. So, uh, but no, I, he's, he is an awesome character. I love the whole storyline between him and Adamon. Leon's only one of the only Resident Evil characters also with that real slick, sarcastic mouth. I really like that. To me, he's almost like the Peter Parker of the um, I could definitely Resident Evil universe. And people love him to death. He, a lot of people love Leon, and I do understand why. He's, that's why I was shocked when they put him in the movies, because he's such a big character in that It's franchise. almost like you, you're, you're setting yourself up to do it yeah. wrong. Yeah. But, um... And like I said, every time they reintroduce Leon, it's every time you're like, man, you are pretty awesome. Like yeah. sidekicks and all that. I had no interest in Resident Evil 6 until I saw Leon's part. And Leon's, in my opinion, Leon's part of that game is the He has the best scenario in that entire game. I agree yeah. with you. Uh, um, him and, and then the whole storyline between him and his partner, all that. Yeah. I actually felt the weakest was Chris's. Okay. And I, I thought that uh, Wesker's son was probably second strongest. It was Jack. Jack, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, so my number one is your number two. Leon Kennedy. Some people would say he's the bad boy of the series. Ooh. I, I like my boys bad. What can I say? But, uh, yeah, I love Leon. Uh, I think, like, for reasons we've said, he's very witty. He's he's really, like, such a good character. And he does a lot of things that just make you enjoy playing as him, too. I agree. Um, like, when you play as Leon, he's just, he one, he's a relatable character. Because it's a situation that, although he's he's put himself into, he's kind of just been like, this is what I wanted to do in my life. I wanted to serve and protect, and I'm going to make sure I do it no matter where I have to go to do it. Zombies or not. Um, and let's be fair, since we've been saying about the girls, Leon is not a bad-looking guy. He no, is, he is not. He's got some good hair, man. He, How the women don't throw themselves at him constantly. <laughs> Leon, I understand the zombie apocalypse is happening. But I just need to get in them jeans, buddy. <laughs> That's what the president's daughter was thinking. The Absolutely. Entire whole, time. Time. the whole time she's like, You see these ballistics the president equipped me with? 
That's great. Um, Let's hear your number one. I know who it is. It's gonna be. It's gonna to me. It's gonna be a cheat. But to me, these you can't have one of these characters without the other, and it's going to be Chris Redfield slash Wesker. Okay. And only because, and the reason I lumped them in, because I understand they are two different characters, and they're also two different awesome characters. The reason why they're... Someone say they're the bad boys of... <laughs> <laughs> no idea how much I want to throw a punch you. The <laughs> reason I lump them in together, though, is I love the Chris and Wesker storyline. I love their rivalry. I love the fact that Wesker looked at Chris at Bar 5 and was like, are you kidding me? And even Code Veronica, like, do you, do you have any idea how superhuman I am? Give up, Chris. And Chris was like, no, I'm taking you down. All right? Yeah. And if Chris could have, he would have took him down the right way. He would have handcuffed him if he had turned to that giant monster. To the point where in 6, a lot of people don't ever touch on this, and it drives me crazy. Chris was depressed after defeating Wesker. Like, he, he peaked. Yeah. You know what I mean? The game, he starts off as an alcoholic, real depressed. You know what I mean? Like, I understand it goes to that whole story that he lost that soldier. But even then, he wasn't in the right mindset. And it's because he had, he felt incomplete after, you know, defeating Wesker. I just enjoyed that whole aspect. So, yeah, Chris Redfield and uh, Wesker. Albert Wesker. All right. Sunglasses inside. Those are our top ten Resident Evil characters. So, weapon technically for me. <laughs> um, yeah, because someone likes to cheat. Um, if you... Let us know who your favorite characters are. You know, it doesn't have to be all ten. Uh, this isn't the end of the podcast. I'm just throwing in a little, you know, letting people know. Let us know who you like. Let us know if you don't like our list. Maybe my number one with Leon Kennedy, as much as he deserves to be there, isn't justified. Calm down, buddy. Anyway. Be a little angry. Let's move on to the news. I got it. So now I'm going to do it. I've been playing Resident Evil Revelations on my Nintendo Wii U. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wow. Guess what, what Nintendo just said. What's that, They sir? gave their price for their online service. All right, now both of us were furious when Nintendo announced that they were charging for their online service. Yes. Um, one of the reasons why I was furious was because, one, Nintendo's online service isn't very great. And I feel like when you're going to charge, that means now there's this expectation of service. And if it falls short of it, or if your service goes out, like PSN did back in P- the PS3 days, I think it was out for like three months, people were really upset. Difference was the PSN back then was free. Correct. You didn't really have a reason to be upset. If if Nintendo gets hacked, now that you're going to charge people, there's a reason for people to be mad. They're paying for a service that they're not going to get anymore. Mm. It's kind of like when my internet goes out. Even if it goes out for a day, I'm like, I'm paying I want that for day this. back, yeah, man. You better give me a free day. Um, With that being said, the price is... $20. For, for the, the year. year. Yeah. That's an entire year. Now... What are your feelings on it? Let's, let's go there first. We'll, we'll talk. All right. Yours. After hearing this price, I'm really glad we're getting that almost a year of a trial to see how it is. Because now, even if I'm just okay with the internet, I don't mind dropping 20 for the entire year. 100%. Um, the only way I would not see justification for dropping 20 is their service has to be awful. And to me, I don't see it being awful. I see it just being mediocre. mediocre. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe it's going to be great. Who knows? Nintendo has to be thinking something about this. But 20 for the year, I couldn't... Yeah, it's a small small price. And, uh, you know, I mean... That, that I any, paid more for Netflix. Anybody can do 20 in a year. I mean, come on. I agree. You know what I mean? Don't um, buy lunch two days at work and you just paid for your Nintendo, <laughs> you know, Switch online for the entire year. Yeah. So. Um, I actually agree. Uh, I do think 20 is an amazing price point. And I actually think it's a fair price point for what they're doing. Especially now that you said you don't get, you only get access for the game for a month. Yes. To me, that that's, that's very fair. Yeah. I'm only paying twenty bucks for the whole year. Yeah. Maybe I don't deserve to own that. Because to me, that's the equivalent of game flying, and you pay way more than that for game flies. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I understand there's still going to be people out there that probably complain. Oh, I'm paying twenty dollars. I should still get the game for free every month. It's like, well, you know Who what? Is this person that you know that talks like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that crazy internet guy. <laughs> Be back in Rocksteady from the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Just pounding away on their keyboards. Okay, I'm going to step on your face. <laughs> the crank's just in the background. <laughs> anyway, but um, I think 20 is great. I think especially if you're just going to be running the games, it's perfect. Uh, I think if they were to charge more... 
Like if they went into micro Xbox PlayStation realm of sixty dollars a year, I think then you better be giving people games. Um, to be honest, I think the twenty is that sweet for it because even twenty five I'd be uncomfortable with. And that's five dollars. Yeah, I think twenty is a nice even round number where you can be like, all right, you know what? That's not bad, Nintendo. I can agree uh, with that. Um, now, the question's going to be how good their service is. Because even if their service, like we said, is mediocre, I'm okay with paying $20 for mediocre service. But is it always going to be getting hacked? Because PlayStation and you know Microsoft, they had that problem when the consoles first came out. They were constantly being hacked. Which, you know, has really died down a lot. I don't really see that. That really wasn't an issue this year at all, um, where I couldn't play my games online. Um, and I'm just curious, like, is that going to be a thing where if I want to play Splatoon, I can't online because, oh, Nintendo servers are hacked again. I, it's just, I don't... Although I don't really know if people think about hacking Nintendo. That's it. what I'm saying. Like, a hacker's going to go in there and be like... I want to yeah, ruin a kid's dream. Yeah, let's, let's take away the seven-year-old's bank account. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, I watched a study where it was talking about credit card information online. PlayStation was up there for Sony. Microsoft was up there. A couple other services where people link their credit cards to that. Nintendo was still really far on the list. A lot of people still just get those Nintendo cards. And I realize there's a lot of kids yeah. are the ones making these purchases. And they're going in buying the cards instead. And it's, to me, that was mind-boggling. Like, wow. Nintendo's yeah. still low on the list of people linking their credit cards to that system. So I can't see people hacking in like, ha, huh, getting four of your credit cards. <laughs> That's it. Oh. That's true. He has 37 cents in his account. Damn it. <clears throat> but yeah, I think the $20 is great. I hope Nintendo down the road doesn't think, you know, this is too low. Let's raise the price again. Um, but we'll see what happens. I don't see Nintendo doing that, though. They're usually pretty fair about their price. They're always consistent with their prices. I can agree with that. Um, when the uh, Nebo starts selling like crazy, then raise the price to, you know, $30 in Nebo or anything like that. It still stayed that consistent, you know. And even if you can find a rare one in the store, it's still, you know, eleven ninety nine. Is that over there? Amiibos, yep, eleven ninety nine. So how do you feel about VR? Still haven't played it. Really? Yeah. You haven't played your Resident Evil 7 in VR? No. Well, you're not doing it on the Switch because Resident Evil doesn't go into the Switch. But <laughs> apparently... Ooh, sick bird! <laughs> apparently... Um, appointment for that one. Nintendo is looking into making VR work for the Switch. They say that, you know, they're going to look into it, and as long as they can make it a comfortable experience, they're willing to do it. How do you feel about that? I could care less right now, because I'm not really into VR. So, you know. Yeah, I'm not really into VR either. If Nintendo is going for it, that means at least they're trying something new, which would be cool. Mm -hmm. um, I think if anyone's first party could make me really want a VR, it would be Nintendo. Yes. If I could walk around Hyrule first person. Oh, or the Mushroom Kingdom. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Finally see Peach's double D's in person. Me Metroid. What? VR Metroid. Metroid. Yeah, the Prime series. Oh, that would be amazing. I'd sit naked while playing that. Yes. <laughs> Uncomfortable. Probably over here, too. That's the weird thing. Imagine the hatching eggs over here and lava over here. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Um, VR is cool. I want to see it take off because so far... I haven't seen anything in VR that made me you know, get real shocked. Like a baby. So far, nothing has made me go, wow, I need to go buy a VR. Um, that being said, I think if anyone could make me do it, it probably would be Nintendo. Because yeah. I think their properties are... Just, they just have such a special place in people's hearts that I think if you could find a way to make us play in them. I, I really want to go to the Nintendo theme park. When that comes out, just because I want to walk through these kingdoms and stuff like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. But, um, so, yeah, I mean, I definitely think Nintendo could do VR well, and I'd like to see what they can do with it. Um, I'm sure you're in the same boat. Absolutely. I was just, uh, you were talking. I wasn't really paying attention because of your sweater. And I was thinking VR and uh, Captain Toad. That would be amazing. Ooh. Yeah, a little treasure hunt. First person you know treasure tracking. You know what I mean? I'd be the most adorable treasure hunter ever. You know what I mean? Toad is the most adorable treasure hunter he ever. Yes, he is. I can you know they are genderless, the toads? Yeah, but I don't understand that because then how is their toadette? Genderless. All right. Nintendo makes no sense. Bowser went from having like 15 kids to like only one. You it's know true. I mean? So, it's Todd. I love the Koopalings. 
No, you do. You and play them in Mario Kart all the time. Yeah, they're all gone. Except Bowser Jr. He's like the only one that anyone ever refers to now. Well, I mean, they're always in the games now, but they're just not Koopa's kids. Mm. Bowser's kids. Um, next was something interesting. So the new president right now of Nintendo said that he was considering making a 3DS successor. Which is weird to me when you have a Switch coming out that is a console, Hybrid. yeah, handheld. To me, it's not odd because if you don't release another handheld, I feel like you're still shooting yourself in the foot. Not, I understand what you're saying. It could take away from sales from the Switch. But I know people that just get Nintendo handhelds because Nintendo puts out quality handhelds and they put out quality games. I can agree with that. At the end of the day, yes, they've announced that they're going to do two Pokemon games for the Switch. I don't know what they are. Most likely they're going to be Sun and Moon remastered or Ultimate Edition or something like that. Nintendo hasn't come out, but that's all the rumors that we're getting it on the Switch. But if the only way for me to play the new Pokemon after that is to have another handheld system, well, I'm getting it, buddy. It's both it's true. Even though this is Pokemon Company's last game, huh? Pokemon Company's done after Sun and Moon. I mean, obviously it's still going to be Pokemon Company, but Game Freak will probably go back to being Game Freak instead of Pokemon Company, and another company will be Pokemon, Pokemon company. company. I feel like as long as you follow that same formula, you can't really mess up. I don't know if that's something that needs to be followed. I think I think a fresh look isn't going to hurt Pokemon. What I would love is a remake of Red mm. and Blue. All right, that would be fun. That'd, That'd be, be really cool. With so, running shoes. Yes, please. <laughs> or roller skates. I'll take that. Um, you ever see when online they were able to turn it into a first person experience, the GameCube game or the uh, Game Boy game? Mm -hmm. That would be awesome. That would be really cool. So, Pokemon's awesome, man. So, I'm yeah. an adult. I really like Pokemon. I'll fight people. Um, I definitely think the 3DS successor could be a good idea, especially for kids. I think the Switch doesn't really look like a kid console looks wise at least it looks more like a sleek very adult looking console yes uh the games on it obviously are still going to cater to both kids and adults but we'll see you know nintendo obviously they're not going to say no to a market if people seem like they still want their handheld but i think they're going to wait to see how well the switch does and i think if the switch doesn't do too well i think this might be their fallback to plan right now yeah um so we'll see I don't know where they would go after the 3DS, though. What else could you do now? For Four screens. Four screens. <laughs> oh, man. Two wasn't enough. Two wasn't enough. Four screened it up. So, or something that, you know how the uh, DS, 3DS connects to the uh, Wii U? Something yes. that connected to the Switch would be pretty awesome, actually. Be able to use a controller for it or, you know. I can agree Something that. that could connect to the side of it. That would be pretty cool. That would be pretty sick. Yeah. So, uh, we'll see how it goes. But to me, Nintendo always puts out really, really good handhelds. And I mean, we and you both have a Vita, but we also both have... 3DS. 3DS. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? I agree. Um, so that's pretty much it for news for Nintendo, but... No, I put this. another $50 on my Switch today for some news. All right. Sharing personal information with everybody. I'm halfway there paying it off, buddy. Oh! <laughs> right? So, That's more than halfway here. Yes. I would have paid it off already, but my wife looks at me like, no. <laughs> so I've been chipping away at it instead. Slowly. Slowly. Can't let her know. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be enough that it puts a slight dent in it, but not too much that she notices the Absolutely money's Absolutely not, because as a grown man, I am terrified of her. All right? She's smaller than you. I know. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. But, um, so PlayStation recently came out and said that with their next update, you will be able to use external hard drives. All right. Explain it the way you did to me today. That means you can plug a hard drive into the USB port yes. and have an external hard drive. Yeah, it's going to make it so that for people that are digital like myself, um, digital I, guy. I already have two terabytes in my PS4, but I had to change the hard drive internally. I had to open it up and change the hard drive myself. Whereas what you guys now are going to be able to do is just plug in an external and load your games onto that, which is convenient. I personally don't like having a cable hang, so I like my method a little better. But the nice thing is my method um, caps out at two terabytes, so I can't actually go any higher than that. This is actually going to, you're going to be able to plug into up to eight terabyte hard drive. Whoa. Yeah. 
Uh, it's a cheaper method as well. It is. It is a lot cheaper. And on top of that, um, for people like me, because you, you just mentioned digital, I don't like uh, uninstalling games out of it because sometimes I want to go back and play. Uh, prime example, I love Grand Theft Auto V. Great game. That takes forever to install on your PS4. It doesn't matter if you have the fastest internet in the world. You could be next to the source code of the internet. The game just takes forever to install in it. So there's been times I'm like, oh, I'm gonna play Grand Theft Auto V, put it in, and I'm like, nope, I'm not gonna wait till this installed two days later and I take it out. So yeah. it's me excited to be able to leave all my games installed this time. Yeah, definitely. Um... Especially when I got things running it on like uh, your the anime. Um, Funimation. Funimation app and my uh, WWE network has run through that. Yeah, Hulu. Yeah. Oh, Hulu you have on your, your, your Wii U actually. Wii U, Hulu, yeah, Netflix right. app. Yeah. I just like the way it runs on Nintendo better in my opinion. Okay. I like that little touch screen. Okay. But, um, so is this something that for you, because I know you're, you mostly still buy disc. Is yes. this something that's now making you consider maybe going digital? Absolutely. Absolutely. I told you before. As much as I love looking at my uh, disc collection, mm -hmm. looking at the games, going after me and you had the discussion about going digital, there's sometimes just playing a game and then, uh, you know, not have to take a disc out or anything, switch into another one. It's just really convenient. Uh, I downloaded Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, and San Andreas all at the same time. The fact that I had no disc or nothing, just... <clears throat> You know, click on it, the game starts right up for me. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty awesome, actually. Yeah, it's, it's a really nice feeling. Um, all the games are yours. Obviously, the only down part is uh, you can't trade them in when you're done with them. But for me personally, and you had the same problem, too, sometimes I would trade in a game and I would want to play it again down the road. Correct. So GameStop would give me two bucks for it, and I'd take my two bucks, and then when I would go to rebuy it, I'd have to pay 30 And it's like, great, I kind of... Just paid more money than... Yeah, I agree with you. I'm not one of those people that hate on GameStop because if you work the system, you can get a pretty penny for some of your games. I agree. You don't go right away and trade it in because, you know what I mean, you're getting less than half of what you paid. Wait till you're trading it in towards something, you always get your bonuses and stuff like that. But there has been plenty of times where, you know, something was coming out and I really wanted it, so I traded a nice stack of games in, paid it off and everything, and then a couple of you know, weeks or years later, I'm like, kind of really want to play that regret trading that in so yeah that was always a problem of mine which is why when i went digital i was, I was kind of happy um i i would trade in games i didn't even beat because a new game would be coming out that i really wanted and i'm like uh forget it, i'll just go i'll buy it again later which is a horrible mentality because then it's like oh now i'm spending even more money on the one game that i already own but um that's awesome so i, I know you're excited for that. they're also adding uh, custom themes which that's cool I like it. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> uh, but as for digital, it would make me more at ease to download some of the older games. And like I said, it also depends on your system. Um, we both got Vitas. At first, I tried to go um, hard copies for everything. And I realized how quickly that gets annoying on the Vita. Those tiny little <laughs> cartridges. SSD cartridges, you know, are tiny to carry a whole thing around with you for your games. Where I downloaded Tomb Raider, Jack and Dexter, Mega Man Legends, and uh, something else I downloaded on. And I'm like, this is so much easier. I touch it. I touch it. Yeah. My finger just touch it, and the game pops right up on me. I agree 100%. Uh, that's actually one of my concerns with the Switch is uh, all those cartridges. They're probably going to be a pain to carry around if you're someone who's going to be on the go. Yeah, and uh, I feel like you can definitely want to go digital with that one. Um, with that being said, the hard drive or the... Um, what is it, a SD card built in? It's not that big, but Nintendo, since I can remember, has always let you do external hard drives. You can do external and you could do a micro SD. Yeah. So, so we'll see what they, how it works. Um, if you're mostly going to be home with it on the dock, you could probably... I feel like most people are. It's still, at the end of the day, it's still a console system. I agree. Um, like, I don't see you going, you know what, I got to go on vacation. Let me bring my Switch with me. Yeah. I got just, the way I see it is... Plus you're a weirdo. You're on vacation. Why are you playing video games? This is true. Enjoy some sunlight. Yes. Get outside. Uh, but I, I see this more as, you know what I mean, I'm in the middle of playing a game, I have a doctor's appointment, let me bring it with me and finish, get to a save point or something like that. Yeah. Or you know what I mean, something along those lines. I don't see this, I don't see this replacing Nintendo's handheld market. 
I don't. I, I see can it, see that. I see it as a neat idea, and, and it's a cool hybrid, but I still see more of anything as a home console system. You like Final Fantasy, right? Who doesn't? I like Final Fantasy. Yeah. Final Fantasy XII, uh, the remaster, finally got its release date. Uh, <laughs> July 11th. So what don't you like about it? I actually, we this is a Final Fantasy we've never really talked about, and I, I know it's very divisive. Uh, some people seem to really like it. Some seem to hate it. I don't like the fact that it's real-time turn-based. I don't like games that are real-time turn-based. Only one game, in my opinion, has done Lost it. Lost Odyssey. Successfully, it was Lost Odyssey. All right, buddy, sorry. All right? We've been <laughs> friends for years. We peaked in our conversation level. There's nothing new I can tell you. I'm <laughs> I'm a jerk. You're fine. But, um, no, I agree, but it's one of my biggest issues with that game. I hated the fact that I would run away from a battle to recover or anything like that. Where Final Fantasy 15, I'd run away from the battle, you know what I mean? This one, I'm getting slashed in the back when a character's feet away from me. It's just, I didn't, so maybe they'll fix it up in that. Maybe I wasn't ready for it at the time, you know what I mean? Uh, because at the time, I was still real into turn-based. So, I'll give it a try. That's uh, how it was for me. I I actually never played the full game. I only played the demo that came with a demo disc when you bought the PlayStation Magazine back in the day. Back in the day, taking it back. Yeah, that's old school. You remember some, demo disc? Some people probably won't even know what we're talking about. We had demo discs. We have <laughs> Showing one, our age. We have one <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> decorating our uh, little studio down here, a demo disc. <laughs> But um, I remember I played it, and I was just disgusted because I came off of Final Fantasy X, which is turn-based, and I love turn-based RPGs, and I was just kind of like, what are they doing to Final Fantasy? Like, this doesn't even feel fun. It kind of feels boring. Um, but I was young. I think I was... I think when that, when that one was coming out, it was like 2002, 2003. So I was like 12, 13 years old, maybe. When it came out after that. It may have. It was a PS. It was on the PS2. Yeah. Um, but I th- it was definitely before 2000. And uh, I did not pick it up at launch. I waited till um, GameStop had this huge sale, and I picked it up for like ridiculously cheap. Okay. And I just did not like it. But at the time, I'd buy every Final Fantasy that came out because mm-hmm. it was a cool thing to do. Cool kids play Final Fantasy. It was kind of man. People who really like those. You. I remember going to school and a lot of people that weren't even good at Final Fantasy just like trying to be part of the conversation. Like, oh yeah, I play Final Fantasy. Do you now, buddy? Do you? Do you, buddy? Did you just watch the opening cutscene? <laughs> Let me guess who your favorite character is. Cloud, huh? Yeah. Oh, because that's not typical. What? Shock. <laughs> Shocker. Oh, he flips out of the train in the beginning. Is that the only part you know? Um, no. I remember this kid's poor kid. His name was Gary. Uh, yeah. Gary, I never read him. I was in, um... Slug? No. From Gary Spongebob? Slug. No. <laughs> Skid Gary. And uh, I'm sitting in school, and I was reading a um, game magazine, and Final Fantasy X was advertised in it. I was like, oh, man, this would be so good. So he comes over, and he's like, oh, what's that? And I was like, oh, the new Final Fantasy. He's like, he's like, can I see it? And he's like, oh, this looks so cool, man. Final Fantasy X. And I just snatched the magazine out of his hand and was like, what did you say? He's like, Final Fantasy X, and I was like, it's 10, stupid. I was like, get away from me, I was so pissed off. Don't you that people do that? I do, I do. Can you grant the photo V? Uh, <laughs> I mean, that gave something, people came up with it. Can I you grant the photo IV? Excuse me, sir? <laughs> Can you grant the photo blood? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, <laughs> IV? Because you're going to bleed. You know what, though? I don't, I don't blame uh, them. I blame society. They don't even teach Roman numerals in school anymore. I don't even understand how. I don't know. I, I think I, I don't even think when I went to school they taught us Roman numerals until I was in college. I never forget. I was working at GameStop and uh, Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe was coming out. And this guy came in and looked behind us at the big post we had and was like, Mortal Kombat versus DC University. Yeah, because they bring you to school, right? <laughs> and just like stared at it for a good like, five minutes. Like. <laughs> Why did you add letters to that? No, that's not at all what it said. What? So retail will really make you lose faith in humanity. <laughs> oh, it, it, it does it quick, real quick. Um, so you wanted to talk about game theories. 
That's like your one of your favorite things. I look it up online all the time. Yeah. Yes. So uh, why don't you tell the audience exactly like what it is? Uh, game theories things. are people that find different Easter eggs or um, creepy pastas or try to explain things in games that don't make sense. For an example, one of the game theories is if you realize every single Grand Theft Auto is on an island surrounded by water at all sides. Now, obviously, the game developers did this so they don't have to make invisible boundaries or bridges that lead nowhere. One of the theories online, though, is Grand Theft Auto exists in a post or a post-apocalyptic era where all civilizations have been cut off, and this is what's left of these little tiny city towns. You know what I mean? Not connected to anybody else. That's that's a theory. Huh? Oh, that's pretty cool. Yes, isn't it? I actually never even thought of that. Uh, it is. It's but it's it's neat to see other people's opinions online of what's going on inside of games. Yeah. I'm sure you've heard the one for Final Fantasy VIII that, um, oh, what was the main character's name? Squad. Squad dies. First disc. And the rest of the game is the afterlife. Huh. That's why the first disc is very grounded realism and after that you have demons and flying beings and it's all kind of different. So It's pretty cool. No, like, I know one of your favorite ones is the like Nintendo ones. Like You like the Mario one a lot. Which, uh, you don't like the real reason behind Mario? <laughs> Didn't they say the real reason is it's all a play? Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah like, no. uh, the creator came out and said that... Yeah, the... that it's all a show, and that's why Mario 3, you go to the curtain, and everything's buckled down. Yeah, I hate that. That was actually from the creator of Mario. Now, I'd rather go with a lot of theories online. Yeah. And stuff about it. Now, one of the theories you were telling me was that Bowser's not the bad guy. Yes. Let's go over that really quick. I just want to hit, like, let's, let's... Well, there's a few of them. There's the um, Bowser that uh, Mario is the one kidnapping Princess Peach. That's why she always ends up back up with Bowser. And that's why, you know, you have whole towns trying to stop you from doing this. So that's one. Um, another one I've ever, always read online is if you read the original instruction uh, PDF or instruction book for Mario... You read that the Goombas were the original inhabitant or inhab well, inhabitants yes, of the Mushroom Kingdom, and that the Toads came and pushed them out. So if there's a theory online that Bowser wasn't bad, he was just from a neighboring kingdom, and that you know the queer, uh, Princess Peach came over with this fungal infection called the Toads and started taking over, and the survivors got away and went to Bowser, and he tried to set a war upon people, and they hired mercenaries. Like Mario and Luigi to come and clear them out. So, yeah, I mean, that's an interesting theory. Or the one that Mario was a psychopath. I've never heard that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you know that all the blocks in Mario or people of the uh, Mushroom Kingdom turned into blocks? <laughs> that, that's in an instruction book in the first Mario game. And what do you do to them blocks, buddy? You, you break some blocks. <laughs> poor, poor Johnson just got turned into a brick. Now does Mario save him? Boom, buddy! Pieces. So. Well, you gotta do what you gotta do to collect coins. <laughs> That's what it takes, I guess. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's a bunch of always um, Nintendo theories out there. There's the Nintendo Connected Universe that all the Nintendo games are all connected in one universe. And that's why you see the cameos and other games on that. Um, so, there's a bunch of game theories. I also like the, uh, I just love Smash Brothers in general. It's not a theory, but the fact that they're just all toys. Yes. And Master Hand is the kid's hands. Yes. There's a theory behind that, that, guess, Super Smash Brothers is the representation of you growing up. In the first one, they're stuffed animals. And then in the um, GameCube one, they were figurines. You know what I mean? And he's getting older and everything like that, and that's why it went from Master Hand to Crazy Hand to... To master and crazy hand at the same time because you're going through puberty and emotion dealing with it. That's why in the last one you put wages because you got work involved in money. So <laughs> there's all these theories out there. But uh, the Grand Theft Auto ones are always really good. Resident Evil ones are pretty decent. Um, I really like the Grand Theft Auto ones. There's a theory in Grand Theft Auto that the uh, Illuminati or the World Banks have taken over completely. And that's why people are all money crazy in this game, and why people, there's no issue with just being able to get a rocket launcher from your neighboring store and stuff like that. So, 
Because at the end of the day, I've said this a thousand times before, video games are a new form of art. Oh, they are. Everybody's going to interpret them differently. 100%. And, you know, you have people out there who say video games ruin kids, children's lives or cause them to do violent acts. When really it's like, you know what, every media at some point or another, they said the same thing about. There were book burnings because people believed that books did it. You know, same thing with television and movies. Television burnings? Not television burnings, but you know. Yeah, they couldn't let your kids watch TV past a certain point. Or you couldn't let them watch certain shows because it would cause them to do acts. It's like, you know what? Video games did a lot for me. I learned to read as a kid because of video games, playing Super Nintendo. Um, so to hear that people think that they can only cause harm is a bit upsetting at times. But you're, and your son, your son plays a lot of games, but he's, he's, he's a great kid. Yes, yeah, very intelligent. I, I don't think he hurt a fly. No, yeah, he's a bit of a jerk sometimes, though. The kids are all jerks. <laughs> so uh yeah he, he loves his nintendo he loves his sega man so uh especially sonic yes but i also believe in um the rating system in video games and i i feel like that goes on the parents you know what i mean at the end of the day i don't let my kid play anything but he games because he's a kid you know what i mean yeah so that's on me now to make sure that he plays the proper games i agree 100 percent. obviously if uh you're a parent and you're going to let your seven-year-old play Grand Theft Auto. It's on you what That's he does with that knowledge after. <laughs> he comes to school and tries to hijack a kid's desk. <laughs> Get out of here! Get out. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> desk goes nowhere. He just sits in the desk half like <laughs> <laughs> he, might, he might be going to a special class after that. And it, it's tough, man, because you know what I mean? Like, some of these games are meant for adults, and I feel like they get attacked, you know what I mean, for popularity. And at the same time, some companies look forward to that. Uh, Rockstar came out and said a lot of the bad publicity they got, they did themselves. They went up to certain politicians and stuff and told them what was in the game, so the politicians would go crazy <laughs> and do free advertisements for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it works, you know what I mean? Because I remember when Grand Theft Auto 3 was coming out, the buzz of that, and then Vice City... It got so big. It was the first time my mom ever got concerned about what was in video games. Because just the newspapers and everything was coming out in Vice City. Was, oh, there's prostitutes. There's drug dealings. There's guns and everything like that. And it's like... Uh, Bad publicity is better than no publicity. That's, well, it worked. Yeah, 100%. Your photos are well-selling games, man. Yeah, that's why those kids that uh, come into my store and think I don't speak Spanish. I don't. But I know... If, I know... Uh, Mucho sexo in Valencia. <laughs> <laughs> and man, let me tell you, when those uh, kids come in and their parents are like, uh, what is he asking? I know all they're saying to the parent is, he wants to make sure we can buy this game. And they're like, yeah, we brought it to the counter. Why can't we buy it? Listen, <laughs> that's but not that's how this works. I give you money, you give me the product, okay? <laughs> and then I say that, and the mom just looks at him like, me or not? Not just sex. <laughs> this is looking disgusting. I do remember that being at uh, GameStop, and a lot of times parents are like, "Oh yeah, it's fine." I flip it over. Yeah, it's uh, su sex, blood, gore, language. And they'd be so embarrassed. No, no, <laughs> sex. <laughs> what are they putting in these games but, nowadays? My favorite is uh, parents now that come in. And they'll be buying their kid a random game. And I'm like, oh, I have to make sure because it's random for mature. Like, yeah, it's fine. It's like, no, 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 I have to read why it's random. So I just read it out loud and they're just looking around like, oh, God, come on. This is so embarrassing. It's like, don't put me on the spot like this. It's like, well, guess what? You're getting it. So, um, but yeah, you know what I mean? And like I said, it the, to me, it's up to your kid and everything like that. Because I was playing rated M games at 13 or 14, but Same. I didn't. I didn't want to go out and do these things I saw in the game. 100%. You know what I mean? I feel like there's a time and place. And I feel like when you're old enough, you know what I mean? You're good. So, suggested age of 17 for rated M. But, you know, I definitely played Grand Theft Auto 3 before I was 17. Sorry. Um, 15, probably. On that note, I guess that's a good way to end episode 10. Grand Theft Auto 3? Yeah. Good. Parents. Mm. Mm. Um, but this has been episode 10 of The Enthusiast. Be sure, if you like this episode, to hit that like button. If you don't, hit that thumbs down. I know one of you did. It's just an option. 
You don't have to actually do it. You know it was you, Justin. <laughs> anyway, it was you. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, please leave us a comment down below. A lot of people actually left comments for our recent uh, Resident Evil episode. Thank you for that. That meant a lot to us, uh, especially those who had really nice things to say. Uh, those of you that didn't, shame on you. <laughs> I'm joking. You can definitely leave us criticism. We uh, look forward to it because we definitely want to make this show better and the best that it can be, not only for ourselves, but for you guys who are listening. Absolutely. And if you have finished Resident Evil 7 or you do not care about spoilers, please check out that episode. Yeah, um, our spoiler cast was really good, um, I would say. It's probably one of our He is best. tooting his own horn, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> we bring up some very good points, I think, in that cast. So. And let us know what the next spoiler uh, podcast you'd like us to do. Or spoiler cast, I guess. We, spoiler cast. There'd be no pod in that, you know? Yeah. So. It's okay. Yeah, it's But, okay. um, yeah, so, so be sure to check us out on YouTube. Check us out on Facebook, SoundCloud, and Twitter. Um, we're still hopefully going to have a website up soon. But, you know, let us know what you think. Let us know how the content is. Dark and... Vader is Luke's father. Oh! Oh! Nah. Snug that spoiler in. <laughs> now you all know. <laughs> But uh, thanks for you know joining us for episode ten. Uh, we hope you'll be back for episode eleven. My name is Will Zabo, alongside Jason Nazario. You guys have a good night. <laughs>